Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome back to another pair of subscriber replays and to kick us off today we are going to be joining Wolfwin and he is in a three man BT7 artillery platoon which confusingly enough is actually a Soviet light tank not an artillery piece but hey ho. Um, he does however get quite a nasty 75mm, 76mm sorry how it's a quite nasty at tier 3 even if the shell velocity is abysmal. Um, so in this video we are going to have a couple of Soviet light tanks. Kicking off here and then we're going to be moving up some tiers for the second game. So, we're here on Abbey, which is not my favourite map in the world, but if you're going to be playing any low tier tanks you're going to see this thing quite a lot, because these days low tier tanks have a rather restrictive map pool, and one of the maps you can get is Abbey, so you get Abbey a lot. The thing with Abbey is that it is kind of the original old school corridor map. You've basically got three sort of corridors to work with. Um, you've got the area around the appropriately named Abbey, of course, in the middle. And then you've got the 1 slash 2 lines, which is my preferred area. And then the 9 line, which I'm not a fan of. So straight away, Wolfwind has bombed it very aggressively down this flank here. Um, and there's no one here. Now I think the one and two lines on this map are one of the more important locations Well, on this map. So the fact that there's nobody here is an in interesting development. Spots out a couple of artillery. I think I would ooh, I would have pulled back to a uh, safer position before shooting these guys, I think. As it is, Wolfwind's going to get away with this, but that'd just be my preference. And you can see how fast this howitzer is reloading, by the way. And while he's not able to one-shot those tanks as... Um, oh, that's a ambitious journey down some rocks. Whilst he's not able to one-shot those artillery um, since the low-tier hit point buffs to all tanks, he is able to two-shot each of them, and well, they don't last very long, is the point. So, pushing through here. Hello, Mr. Panzer 38T. Wolfwind is not bothering to stop. Stopping is for the weekend here. Needs to actually hit something at some point though. BT5, oh, ram there, and the BT5 has abysmal armor. So this, how it's are really gonna do a number on him. One more shot to kill this guy. Come on, there we go. He is done. Wolfwind's driver has fallen out, which is actually going to be a problem because if you look at the consumables Wolfwind is using, he's using a repair kit, which is fair enough. Goodbye, BT7 artillery and he's using a speed governor which makes him faster but it means he has no med pack and remember that tier 3 you only get two consumable slots that's it so he can't put his driver back in but despite that even without the driver whack the speed governor off and he's up to oh only 27 damage that was a bit rubbish and he was up to a pretty respectable speed there. Now, despite the fact the Type 91 is a heavy tank, its armour is abysmal, and so these howitzers just munch through them at an alarming rate of knots. And that guy is done. Have you noticed the scoreline on this match, by the way? This is not going to be a long one. Ah, Valentine. This guy can actually be a challenge because he has good armour. So you need to find a decent spot to hit with your HE shells, and the turret isn't really it. <laughs> Neither's really the side. Now, some of that sloping on the front isn't actually very thick. So shots at the front of this tank, the hull rather than at the turret, are probably a better bet than the turret. Because the turret has a greater wall thickness. Engine deck is also a nice bet. There you can see a penetration into the side of that engine deck. 190 damage. Takes one hit from the Valentine is able to reload and finish the guy off. Has anyone been looking at the damage count, by the way? Remember, this is only a tier 3 tank. <laughs> but when you're, you know, if you penetrate, when you're hitting for almost 200 damage a shot, that's going to rack up quickly. So one more Type 91 on the enemy team. Tier 3 Japanese heavy tank. This thing is just a giant XP pinata. I hate this tank so much. Um, I love the BT-7 artillery. I haven't played it since the uh, hit point changes, to be fair, but it was always a lot of fun in my experience and opinion. Penetrating shot there. Ooh. Now, if he's using the 47mm gun, oh, Speed Governor takes his engine out there. 
If he's using the 47mm gun, oh dear, he can. He's not going to one-shot Wolfwind, but he will reload quickly. That was a miss. But this guy isn't using his full traverse. Oh, another penetration, 134. Type 91 gets terrible gun depression over to the sides. That was never going to work. That one wasn't going to penetrate either. This is dicey. Come on, come on, come on. And there we go. Shot into the bump to kill the guy right at the end. And that is the match. Hold down W until the enemy team is dead. <laughs> uh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. Anyway, let's have a look at the post-game stats for this. There we go, a little bit of fun for you to kick things off with. Ace Tanker, Bruiser, Duelist, Fire for Effect, High Calibre, Top Gun, and a Pascucci's medal there for just mowing down the enemy team. 2,190 damage done, 6 kills, 1,538 base experience for a tier 3. That is pretty nuts. Very, very nice result for Wolfwind there. Um, I'm not going to say it was the height of intellectual gameplay as Wolfwin essentially used the W key and his left mouse button, but it was a lot of fun to watch. Actually, an 80,000 credit profit? Even though you only received 34,000 credits, I think that's just a bit of a derp from what replays there. 30 shots fired, 23 hits, 12 penetrations. 2,190 damage, 7 hits received, 4 penetrated, 3 did not. Not much done by Wolfwind's armour there, but what can you expect? It's essentially a BT-7 with a big howitzer. There we go. Nice little 5 minute game there for you to kick things off. Let's go and have a look at something a little bit more serious. So for our second game then, we are going to join Pansy, and he is driving the tier 10 Soviet light tank, the T-100LT. For anyone who doesn't know what this tank is about, um, basically what you get is a fast, low-profile light tank with armour that can give you a bounce here or there, making it a very good active scout. However, the gun is not great. It's a 100mm gun with 300 average damage at tier 10, 230 penetration, and if you load premium, which is armour piercing, so you get a lower shell velocity into the bargain, that pen only goes up to 248. 248 would be considered bad for regular ammo at tier 10. It's not great even on a light tank regular ammo. But it is what it is. Now, Pansy's here on Studzianki, and probably mispronounced that hideously. And I'm pretty sure uh, I would be correct in saying this was one of Pansy's um, early games in the T100. LT, but he's going to have a good one and you're going to see some silly numbers. So here we go. On this map, this is not my favourite map in the game, but uh, you know. Playing this thing reasonably aggressively, so he's come down into the ditch here, and from this central ditch, you can use the bushes along the sides here to get spots on the enemy team, and straight away there's a clan bar. Tier 10 Swedish. Heavy tank. This is an entirely tier 10 game, by the way. None of this tier 8 and low 9 and lower tier nonsense. Everybody is a tier 10. Takes a bit of a shot on the speculative shot on the grill 15, but uh, no dice. But not spotted, so you know, can work with that. Trying to get spots um, on either the griller or the projector or anyone else up there who might be camperating, but it's just not working. So, relocating. The friendly 215B, by the way, the Death Star over there is getting worked over and actually he's the only one who's gone to that flank. Essentially the friendly team has hard pushed down the J line which is unusual. I don't normally see tanks doing that. Ooh, Pansy gets spotted and manages to avoid getting slapped by that object and the object comes down into the ditch and Pansley is very wisely going somewhere else. So the friendly team has just hard pushed down this K and J uh, line and to be fair to them they are pushing, they're not just sitting there. Um, and the scoreline is actually 1-0 at the moment. Ooh, Pansy gets spotted again. So, this this match hasn't actually got off to an amazing start for Pansy. He hasn't got any assistance damage, he hasn't got any damage of his own. And it's all a little bit awkward. Have no fear that will change, but it is a nice demonstration that even a good player um, who 
who typically gets very good results, can still have those awkward ones. Manages to track the FE, sorry, not the FE, the Object 268 version 4 there, the Bobject, and long story short, that Bobject massively overextended. He had a Jagdpanzer E100 and a CS63 with shots into his side. I, he, he, that is, the, the Bobject is a dumb tank, even after the nerf. I'm not convinced it's balanced. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's still too good, but... If you hold down W until the point that a Jagdpanzer E100 has got shots into your side, okay, you're probably doing it wrong. So, lots and lots of lovely spotting going on for Pansy here. Not quite sure what equipment he's using. Um, I would guess... I think this is, might have been prior to Equipment 2.0, so I'm going to guess there's probably some optics going on there. Um probably not bothering with vertical stabilizers often people don't on this tank because it already has excellent gun handling so if i were to guess he's probably using optics vents and a gun rammer or something like that equipment 2.0 wise i actually think a lot of people are going to be specking this thing out more for pure scouting because frankly the gun is trash and um, for a tier 10 and so there's probably not that much value in trying to up the gun performance just a thought i could be wrong I haven't played this thing. Um, I'm at the tier 9, the T-54 lightweight, and I'm not a fan of the tier 9. Um, so I've been at the T-54 lightweight for some time. Spots out a Death Star, and Pansy is just in the middle of the map spotting all of the things at this point. The enemy team has successfully captured the C and D lines, but, uh, well, now they're getting punished for it question that would be reasonable to ask is, oh that's a tempting shot but lovely bit of trigger discipline there where is the enemy T100 LT that's a good question because the thing is, when you're in this sort of situation, a light tank can be incredibly valuable, getting into a forward spotting location um, with good camo so fairly low chances of getting spotted unless you get very close as Pansy's done here and so the question is, where is the enemy light tank? Because if the enemy light tank were counter-scouting Pansy's location, Pansy wouldn't have been able to do this. Like, are you, are you watching the assistance damage numbers, just by the way? Oh, there's a shot into the Death Star. Are you seeing how big these numbers are getting? Oh, that's a bit dicey. So where's this light tank? He's clearly not AFK because he's picked up a kill makes you wonder if he's sweeping around to try and kill the enemy artillery, but in this sort of situation, there are more important things to be doing. Hello, Mr. Cranbong, you don't appear to be paying attention. And neither does the Super Conqueror. Is this, the Super Conqueror's finally waking up, but the Cranbong's not, so he gets shot again. I don't know what that guy thinks he's doing. Conqueror. Ooh, shot into the lower front plate, and there you can see what I mean about the armour. Whilst you would never describe the armour on this tank as good, it can bounce a shot here or there at quirky angles. Picks up a kill on the Super Congra and that's an autoloader. Let's not have him shooting you, but that's an autoloader who's on fire and appears to have not brought a fire extinguisher. So, that's him done. <laughs> oh dear, and the thing is, he didn't bring a fire extinguisher. Maybe he was using a food consumable, but a food consumable isn't going to make up for the fact that he's just not playing that very well. And there's the T100 LT. It looks like indeed he was going around to kill the friendly artillery. Ooh, there's an FV2. 4005, there's another Death Star. But the thing is, you're going around to take out the artillery in this sort of situation. That is not the best use of your tank, because there is an enemy light tank who is getting your team wrecked. Now, can Pansy survive this? Oh, dear. So, I'm going to be critical of one bit of Pansy's gameplay in this entire game, and it's that engagement with the FE. I think Pansy should have tried to go for the track there. Um, alternatively, kept his momentum up to circle the guy. Like Losing your momentum like that, the FE has a um, reasonably wide traverse arc on that gun. Or just make sure you're behind the guy, because the guy does not have a fully traversable turret. Um, it's only a fairly wide frontal gun arc, even though it looks like a fully traversable turret, it's not. Apart from that, like, beautifully played game there, um, with some positively stupid numbers. Now, 
we know where the T100 LT is. And it's not as if the friendly team didn't get any casualties in that entire engagement. And this TPP has dumped his load, but he's an autoloader. He's on his own. His mag's now empty. He's dead, I mean. <laughs> that's, that's just kind of autoloading 101, really, let's be honest. Don't go anywhere alone. So we've got uh, friendly artillery, tier 10 uh, autoloading bat chat. Worst tier 10 artillery in the game, I think, by general consensus. Friendly Bobject and the Progetto 65 uh, Italian auto reloading. Medium tank. So, can these guys pick up the kill on the T100 LT? You would like to think so. Like, come on. Although, having said that, the T100 has put a shot into that Progetto. One more shot will kill the Progetto. So, you have to be a little careful here. Shot into the T100, and there we go. The T100's done, and that is the match. So, let's go and have a look at the post-game stats for this one. So, despite the fact that Studzianki is not the map that first comes to everyone's mind when people think light tanks, um, you can actually have a really good game on that map in a light tank. It's basically a big, wide-open field, um, which light tanks generally are a, fa are a fan of. Uh, yeah, apparently, that was Pansy's sixth game in the T100, so a very, very nice result there. Ace Tanker, Spotter, Bruiser, Arsonist for, I believe it was the Cranvang who uh, burned to death, Fire for Effect, and a Patrol Duty Medal. Top of his team, 3,711 damage done, 1,285 base experience, 2 kills, and what you're going to see in a moment is even though Pansy got highest damage on his team, that wasn't really where most of his experience came from. Um, if you look at the two teams, the real difference between the two teams was kind of pansy. Uh, I mean, all right, let's compare him with his opposite number, who also got top of his own team. 2,700 damage, 4 kills, and still got 5,000 assistance. That's pretty respectable. Pretty respectable game there from Panzer Kill 78 So how much assistance damage did Pansy get? Well, 9,489, of course. <laughs> That was kind of stupid. 17 shots fired, 14 hits, 10 penetrations for that damage count, most of which was from fairly close range. Two hits received, one of which bounced a quirky angle off his armour, and the other one was a 183mm HE shell wrecking him in one shot. Go figure. Um, five enemy vehicles spotted, six damage, two destroyed, nine and a half thousand assistance damage. 3.45 kilometers travelled and even made a profit into the bargain just to rub salt into the wound. So, there we go. Couple of light tanks for you there um, of the Soviet persuasion, rather differing machines. One with a focus very much on the gun, one with a focus very much on the not gun. <laughs> but you can still make it work. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, by all means, feel free to catch some of my other videos. Subscribe to my channel. Upload your own we replay we plays? replays if you wish to whatreplays.com or a similar website and whack the URL in a link um, and put that link in the Discord. There should be a link in the video description for you to do so. And I shall take a look. There's also a link to Patreon if you wish. And I hope you have fun in your wee little lives. That sounds really condescending and I don't mean, mean it to. What I mean is I hope you're enjoying. Um, I hope things are going well for you. Um, as, you know, 2020 appears to have kind of carried over into 2021 so far to some degree. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.